Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to watch a very confusing video, I assume, titled Why I Converted from Nation of Islam to Christianity by the channel Celeste. I'll say potentially very confusing because it doesn't take a genius to look into the nation of Islam to find out that it has nothing to do with orthodox Islam whatsoever. At best, you could label it a deviant sect and at worst, you could say that it simply has nothing to do with Islam at all. Anyways, to come from that background and then rather than looking into true Islam to then choose Christianity, I have to conclude that this woman must be quite confused. But hey, we will see. Maybe I'm wrong after all. Guys, before we jump into the video, do me the favor and like the video if you enjoy my content. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Hello. Okay. Hola. We are going to try to talk louder because for some reason I don't talk loud enough uh, according to other people's opinions. Um, Might be the mic. Gonna work on that. I'm working on it currently as we speak. But happy whatever day it is. Um, it doesn't matter what day it is. You can still find happiness in it, especially if you are a resident of the United States because other countries have it so much worse. So we are grateful. <laughs> you for think? Today. Um, yeah, I definitely be grateful. Because... It's good that she has some sort of gratefulness about her, I guess. But ultimately, to really believe that the United States is the pinnacle of evolution, the best country around, travel a little bit, and I'm sure you would be convinced otherwise. I had a discussion with someone that I was working with yesterday, and it brought back to me so many emotions and so many things that I used to think about. But basically, I grew up in a nation of Islam. Uh, from okay. birth so until parents. about kindergarten. Mm. And then we still operated as nation Muslims, but we didn't go to Savior's Day. We didn't go to um, the bakery on Sundays anymore. We didn't do any of that stuff. So um, we started off again in in the Your Black Muslim Bakery in Oakland. This is before they shut it down. I don't remember what year they shut it down, but um, basically the, the gist of everything that I learned from the Nation of Islam was fear God, uh, love the leader, um, like almost at the same level that of the reverence that you have for God right. and um, train up your children the way that they should go. And in this belief system, in this religion um, and require excellence and require discipline. Yeah, there was nothing wrong with excellence and discipline, of course. But however, what she witnessed within the nation of Islam is that they do worship their leader. And that is, of course, normal because they really believe that those leaders are manifestations of Allah, Audhu Billah. For example, if you look into one of their leaders or their founders, rather, Wallace D. Fart Muhammad, he was also addressed as Master Fart Muhammad, and he was regarded as a manifestation of Allah in person. And then they had Elijah Muhammad, which ultimately was a leader and a prophet for them. So there already you can see it has nothing to do with Islam because Islam proposes that you do not worship anything within creation, no men whatsoever, obviously, and you worship only God alone. The nation of Islam, on the other hand, of course, worships their leaders and therefore you can understand why she didn't want to be part of that religion. It is absolutely understandable because it goes against your fitra, your natural predisposition to worship a God alone. Um, and discipline should probably be a little bit higher up on that um, on that list that I just gave. Discipline is probably the number one thing that they taught us. We were very disciplined at a very young age and they did not spare the rock <laughs> by, any, by any means. I remember um, when I was really little being really afraid of this one teacher when um they split the girls up and the boys so you never whatever class you had you never had class with the opposite sex it was always no, class with the same sex of people that you and also the teacher was the same sex as you so 
uh, there was this one male teacher that everybody was afraid of <laughs> because they knew if they got out of line, even if you were a girl, if you were an old enough girl and you got out of line, he was coming and he had like this thing. It was huge. It was, it kind of is reminiscent of- Yeah, but that is a bit strange as well because she just said that the sexes were separated and even the teachers were, right? So the girls would have a female teacher and the boys would have a male teacher, but now she says that the girls were afraid of the male teacher as well. Things that they use in fraternities to haze each other, but it looked like an oar on a boat, for a boat. Like it was huge. And he would just smack you, uh, smack your butt rather. Um, and it wasn't done in a way that everybody else didn't know what was going on. Like we could hear what was going on and some people could see as well. Um, but discipline was very important. And that is one of the only things that I have retained discipline and requiring discipline and requiring excellence were two of the only things that I retained. Actually, no, that's a lie. Requiring discipline, requiring excellence and diet. Um, help because yeah, that's good. they were that very, very strict good. about what we ate. Um, we didn't eat like the normal school, school children's diet. We had lentils <laughs> for lunch. Like lunch would be yeah, like okay. lentils and a piece of bread or, um, what? just very, very healthy things. It was, it yeah, was not never very healthy. A yeah. This is probably based on Dr. Sebi. Many black nationalists, Nation of Islam guys, they got into veganism through Dr. Sebi, quote unquote, alkaline foods. And so therefore they came to the dumb conclusion that plants are oh so healthy for you. This is of course ridiculous. And this is not what Islam teaches either. If you look into the prophet's diet, for example. So ultimately, again, what you mentioned there, discipline and excellence and diet. Yes, this is great if they would truly adhere to that. I personally don't let my child eat junk either. Of course, I'm feeding him a good diet. And a good diet on my watch is, of course, a lot of meat, raw meat, raw milk, etc. Um, burgers, unless it was their tofu burgers that they make at the bakery. Uh, like everything was organic, disgusting. everything was pretty fresh and um, high quality yeah. ingredients. High never quality like plants. McDonald's. That was that was unspoken. We never ate pork, obviously Muslims. That's um, good. But discipline. I have to interrupt again. McDonald's is of course utter crap, but honestly, it's better to eat a McDonald's burger than a tofu burger. Uh, requiring excellence and health diet were like the only things that I've taken from that experience. And when I was talking to this coworker, she was asking me, well, what made you change from being um, Nation of Islam Muslim to a Christian? I like that she says Nation I, of I'm Islam Muslim. I'm the only Muslim. person in my family That's who is important. actually a practicing, as a better word, the only person in my family who's a practicing Christian. Um, and it was strange, obviously, at first, um, when we moved from Oakland to Sassoon and then we moved from Sassoon to Fairfield and, um, basically the further away that we got from that, from the, your black Muslim bakery, the further that we got from, um, Islam in theory. So in we theory. still didn't celebrate any holidays. We still didn't, um, well, we didn't celebrate like the, the, Christian how the they're really pagan if you know anything the Christmas pagan <laughs> New Year's yeah pagan yeah um, most of the holidays that are on the American calendar are pagan but why you did you become right a now. Christian we now you do that's quite amazing that she understands that actually looking into it everybody can understand that it really doesn't take a rocket scientist and you will see yes all of those holidays created by the roman catholic church predominantly of course all of them are pagan so therefore what is christianity the question then becomes is it truly jesus's religion did jesus preach and practice those things that the catholic church now preaches and practices of course not therefore again the question becomes what was jesus's religion then and if we look deeper into it, we will understand, of course, that Jesus submitted his will to God in a very puristic sense that even transcended the socio-political and religious norms of his time. 
the Pharisees, etc. And therefore, you look at Jesus, he was a submitter to God, to God alone. That means he was a Muslim. Somebody that submits his will to God is naturally a Muslim. Islam means submission to God, to God alone. And this is what we practice as pure Muslims, not as nation of Islam, Muslims and what not. And therefore, it is quite a shame because she has such a tainted picture now of Islam due to the nation. However, ultimately, she already understands that Christianity, the practice of it, is pagan. So why not look into true Islam? Point in time did not celebrate holidays. Um, we prayed in Arabic. Uh, we tried to maintain the you know washing of hands and praying multiple times a day kind of thing. But after a while, because my parents weren't really honest about it, we just kind of became lukewarm Muslims, I guess. Um, but we still maintain whenever someone asks you, like, what is your religion? What is your belief system? We would always say Muslim up until about uh, eighth grade when my father, for whatever reason, I still don't know to this day how this happened or why this happened. Maybe he was just trying to find um, something to believe in. But my father started making us go to this Baptist church in in the city that we lived in. Okay. And so it was the dad off it was really weird to us, the children. Like, we're like, sure. why are we here? <laughs> like, why are you making us do this? You know, kind of thing. And uh, my mother made us join the usher board. And I hated being an usher. <laughs> being an usher was the worst for me because I don't really like talking to people. And I am not the kind of person to tell other people what to do. So putting those two together in a, in a job, in a church where I don't even believe in this stuff at the time was, it was very, it was like a culture shock experience for me, especially being a child in a black church. Um, and we kind of, as we, as we grew up a little bit and started getting older, again, my parents stopped coming to church. Um, I was pretty much the only one that stayed and I stayed because I was in the choir oh, man. What and a mess. I loved the music and I was actually listening during the sermons. Like I was actually listening. I was trying to figure out what is this really, what is this Bible? What are, what is this religion? What is this belief system really about? Yeah, just another quick interjection here. She came from one sect of Islam into another sect of Christianity because Baptist Christianity is a way, way later invention and has nothing to do with the orthodox conception of Christianity either. And um, I used to always ask questions like <laughs> I was the person in Sunday school who always had a question, always posing questions to the pastor and to the ministers like, why aren't there dinosaurs in the Bible? You know, stuff like that. Um, but I was very curious about this religion and um the more that i learned about it the more that i learned that islam not even islam and christianity i don't want to say that but the quran has texts that are from the old testament um, which ones so Point them out. it in a this way this is a claim that has never been proven you don't have any word for word copies from the old testament in the quran quite the opposite actually certain claims within the old testament were actually proven false and the quran came to correct them so therefore if the quran would have copied the old testament why not simply copy the mistakes of the old testament as well but we cannot find anything of those sorts was familiar but i noticed huge differences and um, to answer that question of why did I go from being a Muslim, even albeit lukewarm, but being a Muslim to being a Christian was, oh my goodness, I hope y'all can't see all that. Yeah, thank you very That's much. That's not what we go I for. censored it. I'm just going to crop that out. <laughs> but she didn't crop it out. The, um, the, the reason was because in the experience that I had, um, being raised in what, for lack of a better words, is really a cult. Um, sure. The difference between Christianity and Islam for me was grace. 
In Islam, from what I have experienced, and again, I can only speak to my own experiences and the things that I saw, um, yeah. there was no grace in Islam. Yeah, of course, there is such a concept in Islam as well. We wouldn't particularly use the same wording, grace, but mercy, forgiveness, compassion that you find within Allah, of course. We know that every prayer starts with Bismillah rahman rahim which means in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate. So therefore, instead of the word grace, the word divine mercy would describe Islam quite accurately. Leaders and higher ups to the people, but also from God to the people. Like it's really kind of a gamble in Islam. You don't actually know, there is no surety that at the end of your life, you're going to be in heaven with the Lord or with, you know, the God that they believe in. There's no surety of that. And that's you not true. So as a Muslim, as somebody that submits his will to God, you will surely end up in paradise. That is factual according to our belief. However, of course, if you have too many sins, it might be that you need to be purified through hellfire, if you will. So there must be some sort of purification, some way of repaying the debt, if you will. But ultimately, yes, as a Muslim, you are promised Jannah, paradise. Throughout life, trying to be in right relationship with God or trying what to... What is the right know, relationship? be saved because of what you do. Um, and I saw a problem with that once I encountered Christianity where this God realizes that in your own strength, you cannot do what he requires of you in order to be with him in heaven. Yeah, and that so is ridiculous. So ultimately she says God requires a certain standard of you, but he created you in a way where you cannot live up to that standard. On top of that, you're forever sinful, of course. Why? Not because you did something. No, quite the opposite. Adam and Eve did something and now it's your fault. You're eternally sinful because of that. And now the question becomes, of course, how do I get saved? How do I get rid of that sin? The only way for God to forgive your sins now is to let his son or himself, depending on who you ask, die for your sins. So now you didn't do anything and you are guilty. And now again, you don't do anything, but you are saved. And all of that because God created you in a way where you are simply not able to live up to the standard that he proposed to you. Sounds great. He, this God, sacrificed himself in order to atone for the sins that you do. And yeah, why? that in and of itself was the only, that is, um, that is the gospel to me, that there is grace. There is this creator God who cares and loves his children so much. Yes, he has requirements. However, he is gracious enough to us to understand that we will always be human. Okay. And yeah, so basically I took the right terminology there because in that context, grace and mercy would be interchangeable. And guess what? In Islam, Allah is so merciful that he simply forgives your sins once you repent. Once you honestly say, hey God, I messed up here. I repent. I pray to you alone. I don't want to commit any more of those sins. Allah forgives you. That's it. He doesn't need to punish you for something that you haven't done and then kill himself for you. Why would he? He is God. If he wants to forgive you, he will. And again, Allah is so merciful that he simply forgives. Because he knows that we're always going to be human and that we're always going to do the wrong yes. thing and we're always going to mess up. No sure. matter what we do, no matter how many laws that he gives us or how hard we try to uh, maintain those laws, and um, follow those laws and teach those laws to our children that it, it doesn't matter how hard we try, we need someone to save us from ourselves. We needed someone to save us for ourselves. Yeah, I mean, you can hear the cracking in her voice. So she is extremely emotional. And you see that with many emotional people that they gravitate towards Christianity because they're truly in need of some sort of savior figure. But ultimately, it's very incoherent, of course, what she says, because she claims there is a God with laws. So he dictates laws onto us, but somehow he knows we cannot keep those laws anyways. So might as well kill myself. 
How does that make sense? And especially if you look into where those laws came from out of the Jewish context, for example, if you look into the Old Testament, so you see that those people were supposed to adhere to those laws. And then later on, Paul shows up and now tells you that you are saved by grace, by faith alone. You don't have to adhere to anything anymore because you're a flawed human being anyhow. And Jesus died for your sins. Yet again, this is incoherent and doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And in Christianity, we have Jesus who, again, God in flesh and sacrificed himself. That's very in sad. Islam, you don't have that. The only no, person who um, who can atone for your sin is you. And at the end of the day, your sacrifice, no matter, at least this was my mindset. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much you try to do your sacrifice alone is not going to be great enough to cover the number of sins that you do. So why? Um, yeah. Why is that so? Ultimately, it comes through the absolutely unrealistic standard that Christianity sets, of course. I've seen certain Christian apologists, what was his name again? Ray Comfort, exactly. And he says that if you've stolen anything, even as a child that stole a little candy, it is the same for God. You are a thief at heart now, don't you see? Or even if you just thought about sex, you already committed adultery in your mind and therefore you are a fornicator, don't you see? So therefore there is this extremely unrealistic standard in Christianity, of course, where you commit fornication, zina in Islam, just by thinking of it, you're responsible for your thoughts now. And if you've stolen a candy as a kid, you essentially deserve the death penalty because Christians say the wages of sin is death, right? And because they have this unrealistic standard, they don't know how to get out of this dilemma and therefore they need God himself to come down to earth and kill himself for you so you can finally be saved. This is of course ridiculous in Islam. God is all knowing and he surely understands the difference between you stealing a candy as a child and you robbing a bank as an adult. It is simply not the same. This unrealistic standard is not imposed onto us Muslims and therefore we have our good deeds and we do have our sins. Of course, we should follow the laws of God. However, ultimately, even in Islam, we have the concept of the mercy of God, as I already mentioned, and we all will inherit paradise just by the mercy of Allah. So it's not by our own doing that we worked ourselves up to paradise. In the end, it comes down to the mercy of God. That was my experience of uh, how did, because people ask me all the time, you know, they assume because I am a younger black woman who is very active in my church, that I am, um, that I was always saved or that I was always Christian. And that's not the case, you know? And I think that um, black Christians so often take for granted the gift, you know, that we have been given and if you understood how other religions were, you would take what has been given to you more seriously. You would be able to come into your church and, you know, lift up holy hands and really be grateful of holy the sacrifices hands, yeah. and the things that God is doing for you, even just in that moment that you're able to breathe. Like, okay. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. I'm going to cut it off here. It's kind of sad, to be totally honest, because she's so sad. The whole video through, her voice is cracking as well. Tears are running down her face. She's surely not really happy, but at the same time, she somehow tries to convince herself, I believe, of her being happy. I really don't blame her leaving the nation of Islam the way that she described it. It must have been horrible, especially growing up predominantly eating lentils every day. This is, of course, disgusting. I would have left that cult too. But when it comes down to what Islam teaches, she is, of course, very, very wrong. She has a very scoot definition of Islam through the nation and therefore gravitated towards something that felt good to her. You can see she seems kind of nice, so she looks for something that will give her grace, give her forgiveness, save her ultimately from her dilemma. 
But if you look at it rationally, logically, pragmatically, you will of course see that there is absolutely no salvation within Christianity. A God that creates you flawed, but at the same time has a standard for you that you cannot reach. And therefore, in order for you to be forgiven, he himself needs to kill himself yet again. So it all resolves around a God that shows mercy to you after being extremely abusive. And therefore, I would say that this is Stockholm Syndrome. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, leave it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh.